Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and today we are doing the three-year update on the Pond Ecosphere. And here she is. This is a one-gallon pickle jar that I have recycled and repurposed into a beautiful, self-sustaining ecosystem. This project has been completely sealed for three years. It has not been opened, and it's doing quite well. Now I should mention that I build ecospheres a bit differently than some of the other YouTubers that you might watch. They will typically uh, scoop up some pond water or some rainwater, and they'll seal it up and they'll wait to see what will happen. Whereas I like to start with a purpose-built project. I try to include the right mixture of nutrients, uh, plants, and animals of various species uh, to create a long-lasting ecosystem. I want my projects to last for as long as possible, and I want to show you that you can plan out an ecosphere and uh, really make something nice. Now, unfortunately, the pond ecosphere build video has been lost to the ages. <laughs> um, I first built this tank when I had first gotten started on YouTube, and the quality was so bad, uh, I eventually took it down as it did not reflect the nature of the channel as it is. But that was three years ago. And the jar is still with us. It's still part of our projects. Those of you that have followed the channel from the beginning may remember the build video. And uh, it was quite low quality. It's very hard to watch now. But the tank is still part of our hobby, part of our projects, and I want to show you an update on the tank itself. So some things have changed over the last few years. Uh, number one, uh, we did include a label on the lid when we built it. You can see here it's labeled Pollen Ecosphere. Unfortunately, the label has started to show some age, and the lid has started to degrade a bit as well, which I did not expect. But to be fair, I did not think that this project would last this long as it was. Uh, but we're going to dust it off and take a better look. So to start with, um, I'm going to wipe the tank down a little bit. It is pretty dusty. I have had this ecosphere outside in a sunlit shed <laughs> near a window. I've also had it under artificial light in my bedroom. I've had it in a plant container shelf type setup. Uh, but we're going to just dust it off here. And uh, we're using a bit of cheesecloth with some water. You can use a paper towel to uh, clean a tank like this. But the paper towels will leave little fragments. And when you start to film, you'll see them on screen. It's pretty bad. So I like cheesecloth. And now on to the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a look inside the uh, ecosphere. And here you can see the moss. We included moss and spike rush as our plants in this project. And the moss has done quite well. You can see here it forms long strands when grown underwater. And this is the same moss that is uh, used in some of my latest videos. Harvested from my very own backyard. It is a terrestrial moss. grows on dry land. But when grown underwater it will form long strings. A bit like this. And uh, it does that, I believe, because it cannot rely on normal reproduction methods using spores. So it relies on these long strings to grow and break off and form new moss clusters. But it's doing really well. There's quite a bit of it in here. Some of the moss has wilted. It has gone brown, and you can see quite a few tannins in the water as well. That's the yellow color. But ultimately, the moss is surviving, and the tank looks pretty healthy. I see several creatures in here swimming around. And uh, we have uh, quite a few, actually, which is a big surprise. Honestly, I expected this tank to be pretty much dead inside. Um, just glancing at it, you see that the water is pretty brown. There's a lot of tannins in here. And I didn't expect to see so many animals. But we have worms and ostracods and other microfauna swimming throughout the ecosphere. The moss is thriving, actually. It's growing quite a lot in here. It grows very slowly, which I should mention. But we can see several water mites and quite a bit of moss in here. Um, this tank is really surprising me, you guys. I am very happy about this. Uh, again, this, this has been sealed for three years. And uh, most of what I've been told on the internet is that an ecosphere will not last this long. So we must have done something right when we put this together. I did use the Wallstad method, which is uh, potting soil capped by sand with a healthy amount of plants and several different species of uh, starter creatures, you could say. Uh, several different animal types that I included to hopefully, you know, get some breeding populations to establish themselves in this aquarium, in this ecosphere. 
The audio quality may change a bit here. I had to step into my little recording booth, and it's pretty hot out here to be honest. Uh, but hopefully that doesn't affect our sound quality too much. But yeah, looking up near the surface, we can see quite a few worms, quite a few ostracods, and some other microfauna swimming around. Um, this tank is very active. I am really surprised, you guys. Uh, you know, I really thought this tank was going to be dead inside, but it's it's thriving. It's doing so well, and that's amazing to me. Three years in a sealed jar, and we have animals like this just thriving inside, doing so well. Looking lower in the ecosphere, near the substrate layer, uh, we can see the other plant that I included in the build. This is called spike rush, and this is very rare in the aquarium hobby. Uh, but here in this sealed ecosphere, it's done pretty good. It forms long hair-like leaves, and uh, those leaves will grow and eventually produce more spike rush plants. Uh, but it's thriving in here as well. It grows pretty slow, but it's it's growing and it's surviving, which makes me pretty happy. That's another plant that has survived in this ecosphere for three years now, and it looks pretty good. I use spike rush as the primary filtration in my 10-gallon guppy tank, and it's an interesting plant. I'm most likely one of the very few people that happen to grow this in aquariums, but it can also grow on dry land, and it looks very much uh, the same. I found this plant originally growing in my yard, and we repurposed it into an aquarium plant some time ago, but it's a lot of fun, and it does really well underwater. But if you look closely, you can see a few of our smaller creatures swimming about. They are very active down here near the substrate layer, and uh, that's pretty impressive to me. Again, I had expected that, you know, maybe up near the surface there would be more oxygen or uh, different elements that would allow them to survive. But they're doing very well down here in the bottom as, uh, just as much, really. And uh, there may even be more of them down here. These small creatures are photo-attractive, which means they pursue light. And uh, they are clearly chasing after the light that I'm using to film the ecosphere. And that's pretty cool. There are quite a few of them in here. Um, I see several ostracods and some other creatures as well. Some of them I cannot identify. Um, some very small ostracods. And it looks like some copepods and maybe some rotifers. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but they are doing really well in here. And they seem to be thriving which is pretty cool to me. A sealed ecosystem in a jar and have uh, so many different life forms inside. Uh, but these little guys are very active and they're doing really well. Now, I am tempted to, uh, you know, just sit here and talk about these small animals forever. Uh, but we need to look at some other elements in the ecosphere as well and uh, see what else is going on in here. Elsewhere in the ecosphere, we have more spike rush growing. And uh, this plant is actually linked to the plant in the bottom. And uh, they do that by uh, essentially growing runners and, you know, growing new plants. Eat. Now up here near the surface, uh, it is actually reaching out of the water, which uh, kind of qualifies it as an emergent plant. But we have some algae and some other things that have grown up here as well. There's actually quite a bit of moss and spike rush growing up out of the water, uh, but I just can't photograph it due to the cloudiness in the tank here. And uh, though the water portion is quite clear, the uh, upper portion is quite cloudy. And uh, that's from pond scum and algae growing up here on the glass. Uh, but inside here, in the oxygen portion, in the air portion, uh, it is essentially raining. Uh, as water evaporates from the bottom, it, you know, drifts down from the top as condensation. And there is a continuous light uh, rain going on in the tank, which is pretty cool. And you can see a large worm there uh, moving around. A fairly large worm, which is pretty surprising for this project. So we clearly have a very active ecosystem here. And uh, we may lack predators. Um, there probably aren't very many creatures in here that are feeding on the microfauna, uh, whereas they are actually feeding on the algae and the plant material that's growing in the tank. So that's okay. You don't necessarily need predators to have a functional ecosystem. Uh, though it would be interesting to see something, uh, you know, hunting and attacking the other animals inside. Um, predators are much harder to keep in a sealed ecosystem like this. So uh, it's no big loss if we don't happen to have any. 
Now I have mentioned in my other videos that ostracods will occasionally perch on hardscape and plants. A bit like a bird landing on a tree branch. And here's a great example. These ostracods are all over this particular piece of moss. And uh, I don't know why. Maybe it happens to have some algae on it, or it's just in the right location for them to land on. It is growing in a horizontal way instead of the vertical way of the other strands of moss nearby. Uh, but the ostracods are clearly infatuated with it, and they are all over this particular piece of moss. You can see quite a few of them here are just piled up, and um, they're enjoying it a great deal. We also have a fair number of water mites in here. Uh, that's the uh, small black creatures there you see on the uh, moss on the side. And uh, I did not expect to see them. I thought that part of their life cycle involved a uh, parasitic phase. Uh, but it looks like that's not true for that particular species. They seem to be quite content in this aquarium, in this ecosphere. Now returning to the bottom of the jar, I wanted to show you the stratification that has occurred in this ecosphere. This project was built, uh, there's a bit of dust there. Uh, but this project was built using the Wallstead method, which is essentially uh, potting soil, organic potting soil on the very bottom, uh, with a layer of sand on top to help keep it pinned down. And I used some non-biodegradable window screen to help keep the soil uh, pinned down to the bottom. But on top of the sand layer, we have a very thick layer of mulm that has formed. And that mulm has been created by the creatures and the plants living inside of the ecosphere. That is M-U-L-M, -M, mulm, and it is produced by the plants and animals living inside the ecosphere. I did not include the mulm layer when I put it together, uh, but it has formed over the last few years. And you can see some uh, discarded uh, bodies and shells from uh, ostracods and maybe even a bladder snail. Uh, we may have had bladder snails in here when I set it up, but it looks like they have gone extinct, which is unfortunate. Uh, but in this mulm layer, we have some, quite a few, uh, worms. Some large worms that are living in here and acting exactly like earthworms do. They are consuming the mulm layer and uh, helping to break it down and turn it into fertilizer for the plants to consume. This is a cooperative system. This is a, a model of life on Earth. And uh, mulm layers are nothing to be afraid of. Yes. But that's about it for today, guys. Um, this is the three-year update on the pond ecosphere. I have several links in the description below um, featuring different uh, videos we've made about this jar. I may even include the build video if it's available. But this tank looks really good. It's a bit strange, a bit dirty from the outside. But when you really look closely, you'll see um, tons of moss spike rush and algae growing inside thousands of little creatures in here colonizing this habitat actively living out their lives breeding and reproducing living and dying in a sealed self-sustaining ecosystem so i'm really proud of this i hope that you enjoyed the video i know it was a bit long and i was a little bit behind on my uploads i usually get a video up on sunday uh, but today it's going to come up around tuesday but I wanted to make sure that you got a good quality video to watch, and I wanted to uh, share this particular project with you. The three-year update. I'm so excited. But I hope that you enjoy the video. This is the three-year update for the Pond Ecosphere. There's tons of content on my channel. I upload every week around Sunday, and I'm always happy to share with you. Please remember to check the description, and uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And don't be shy. Leave a comment, too. See ya.